All right, I would like to talk about primitive types in Java today. So there are eight primitive types that you can use for variables and arrays. They are byte, short, int, long, float double, boolean, and char. In general, these four up here are various kinds of integer types where they're whole numbers. These two are the real types. Boolean is a true or false value. And char, which is a character type. And in Java, this is a Unicode character. So they are the integer types, byte, short, int, and long, which have various numbers of bits to represent the numbers that they are. So byte has the fewest, long has the most. Byte is 8, short is 16, int is 32, long is 64. Float and double. Uh, float uses 32 bits of precision, double uses 64. And it's a complicated data type, so I'll talk about that later. Boolean, which is either true or false, based on Boolean logic. And character type, char, which is a Unicode in 16 bits. So what is a bit? A bit is a binary digit. It's either a 1 or it is a 0. This translates to electricity either being on or off on a wire, basically. Sometimes you'll see these as true and false, 0 and 1, on and off, various representations. 8 bits has been given the idea of a byte, and that's what we use for a lot of our memory allocation. Eight of these individual zeros and ones being on or off represents a byte. So the way that you read these is they're in base two, which means that this is the two to the zero slot, and two to the zero is one. This is two to the first, two to the second, two to the third, two to the fourth, two to the fifth, two to the sixth, two to the seventh. Another way of thinking about this is that it doubles each time. So when you multiply by two, one times two is two, times two is four, times two is eight, so on down the line. So that's what the digits mean. Now if you have a one in that slot, you basically add that number in. If there's a zero, you skip that digit. So in this particular number up here in binary, we add one, four, 16, 32, and 128, because those are all have ones in their spots. So if we were converting to decimal, which is the numbering system we use, which is base 10, you add those together and you get 181. So how do you represent negative numbers in this? This is all just positive right now. There's a couple ways to think about doing this. Uh, the initial idea might be, OK, let's just take this first bit up here and say, all right, that's a negative sign. So if it's a 1, it's negative. If it's a 0, it's positive. In this case, this number would then represent negative 53. Now, there's a problem with this, the most important of which is that there's two ways to represent 0. You can have a positive 0 and a negative 0, which ends up being a problem when you start thinking about mathematics. The other thing is that they don't add together very well. So if you try and add a number in one's complement that's positive and a number that's negative, there's just not a terribly natural way to add them together. So this ended up leading to another method called two's complement. So two's complement, what you do is you take whatever your number is. So if you take this number, which is 22, 2 plus 4 plus 16, 2 and 4 is 20, plus 2 is 22. The way you make it negative is you flip all of the bits. So any zeros become ones, any ones become zeros, and then you add one to it. So just like in regular mathematics, 1 plus 1 equals 2, but in binary, 2 is a 1, 0. So you carry the 1, and it brings it over here. So this represents negative 22. Two's complement is nice because you can add two numbers together, and it just naturally works the way that we think of normal mathematics. It does mean that you need to know how many bits are in it, because if I added leading zeros to the front of this, that would actually change the way the number was represented. The other thing that's kind of an unfortunate side effect of two's complement is, since there's only one zero, there's a number at the very negative end called the weird number, which basically has no positive inverse. You can represent positive 127, but there is no positive 128 in this representation. All of the Java numbers are signed, so bytes, integers, longs, and shorts are all signed in two's complement. So another way you can represent binary, by the way, is hexadecimal. With hexadecimal, instead of just using 0 through 9 like decimal does, or 0 and 1 like binary does, we have 0 through 9 and then A through F. Basically, you go 0 through 9, and then after 9 is A, which is 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, F is 15. And if you add one more, then you basically go to the next digit. So it would become 1, 0, would be 16. This is really useful because it's a way of representing binary digits very quickly. So if you look at these digits here, notice that 
a 10 represents four digits, an 11 represents four digits, and we get up to 15, and this is all ones. You can represent four digits with a single hexadecimal letter, so it's a faster way of representing binary by using a different encoding system. So here's an example of actually using hexadecimal. It's often used in colors, so if you look at web colors, for example, they often use red, green, and blue, where these first two digits here are red, the next two are green, the next two are blue. And it represents a number from 0 to 255 for the red, the green, and the blue. So this color is 0 for red, these two digits. These two digits are green, so it's 0. And CC, when you translate it to decimal, is 204. So if you actually look at a color, it looks something like that. All right, real numbers, so floating point numbers. These are actually much trickier in the way they're encoded. What ends up happening is, is you break the number into pieces. So you have a sign bit, so it is a positive or negative, an exponent, and then the mantissa, which is like the significant digits. So in 32 bits, you have one sign bit, eight exponents, and 23 bits for the mantissa. In a double precision number, you have 11 bits for the exponent, 52 for the mantissa. That's the difference between them. So the formula is that you have the positive or negative times one point, and then however many digits you have here as an implied one, times two to raise to whatever this power is as a binary digit. Float is even weirder in that there are some special cases. So for example, this is how you represent zero in a floating point number. This is how you represent 1.0, 0.5. There's a positive and negative infinity, as well as not a number for when you divide by zero. Not only do you have this kind of interesting formula, but there's actually some reserved numbers as well. And if you actually take a look at the way you represent numbers using scientific notation, you'll start to see why. Boolean is pretty easy. It's true or false, one or zero. Uh, depending on the operating system, it may not be able to represent a single bit, but ideally it would. Then we have a character. So in Java, we use Unicode, which is 16 bits. The first uh, set of which is the ASCII chart, so American Standard Code for Information Exchange. It's the, all of the typical symbols you find on a keyboard. Zero is a number 48 in decimal, a nine is a number 57 in decimal. Uppercase A is a 65, lowercase A is a 97. So all of these various symbols are the beginning of uh, Unicode. Unicode also has space for all of the various symbolic alphabets, so you'll have kanji of various kinds from Japan, China. They represent Arabic, that kind of thing. So there's a lot more space available for different kinds of symbols. Hopefully that teaches you some basics about primitive types in Java.